The Prime Minister. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It, it comes um, to this hour and this last day of the Parliament sitting to offer some thanks um, to members of this place, to all of those who, who look after us, and to the many Australians around the country. Mr. Speaker, as we do this, it was, I think, apt. Last weekend, I had opportunity to be out in southwestern Sydney. I was at Buxton with, indeed, the local member, and we were there on what was both a, a happy but also a very sad occasion at the same time, because we were there to unveil, open a memorial playground in honour of Jeff Keaton and Andrew Dwyer, and we were there and joined by his their many friends from the Horsley Park Rural Fire Service, captained by Darren Nation, a great Australian, but importantly, most importantly, by Melissa and Jess, their partners, and of course Charlotte and Harvey, their son and their daughter. And Mr Speaker, it reminded us of the journey we have been on, and on the 19th of December it will be one year since we lost Jeff and Andrew. And we lost many more over the course of the year that followed, 2020. We've lost those to COVID, we've lost those in bushfires. It has been a year of great loss for Australians. Terrible loss. Losses that will leave deep scars on Australians and on our country. They are deep and they will take a long time to heal. That healing process, Mr Speaker, will come and will flourish from the care and compassion and the love and affection that is provided by their fellow Australians. We will see the, the visible evidence. We will see the superficial evidence of things improving, Mr Speaker, but we know for many years 2020 will be something that will take Australians many years to get over, their mental health support in the years ahead, the regrowth of our economy, the restructuring of our economy so it can grow again yep. and realise the lives and livelihoods that Australians aspire to. And so that is the year we have been through. And so as we come to the end of this parliamentary year and as we look forward to the Christmas period and, and the New Year period, we do look forward with a sense of hope. We do look forward with a, a, a sense of gratefulness that despite everything that has happened, despite everything that has been lost, that we can look forward and know that things will regrow, that things we will build, that lives will be restored. And our nation, as we come, particularly now to Christmas, Mr Deputy Speaker, has come together again as borders have come down and, and families will meet again right across the country, from coast to coast, from, from north to south, Australians will come together again over this Christmas period. And this was an important goal, and I'm so pleased that it is being realised. There are many people to thank, Mr Speaker, as we come together. I particularly want to thank all the members of this place as I start. All the members of this place. We have all, in our way, carried leadership responsibilities this year, whether in our local communities and the many other ways we serve, in our families and in our roles here as members of this parliament and those in the other place. We have been supported so, by so many in those jobs and we have sought to support so many in the great works that they have been doing in our community whether it is the many that were referred to and, and thanked in question time today in our defence forces, our frontline health workers, our, our teachers, our businesses, our employees, those who have taken great risks, those who have helped out and reached out to others in times of need. We will need them all. And as we go into this holiday season, let's hope it is a good one. There will be many who will continue that job over that break. Yep. Lifeline and other services and volunteers, 
those who will be preparing things for Christmas Day, food and shelter and comfort, help and support, or simply company, the doctors and nurses and medical staff who will be on call, the police and the paramedics and the ambos, the surf lifesavers which will be on our beaches and the rural fire service volunteers who will be ready to go again on call, ready to go and indeed in so many places already even in this season have already been called out. Those looking, for our, looking after elderly Australians, many of them whom completely alone and isolated and will know the loving touch and care of those who work in our aged care facilities. Our defence forces who continue in Operation COVID-19 Assist, the 1,500 defence force personnel who continue on operations all around the world, we thank you for your service and we are proud of you and your yeah, service. Yeah, yeah. I also want to acknowledge the incredible support and actions taking on the commendation of the member for Lingyari to our Australian public service. They have had, I believe, their finest year during the course of this COVID-19 pandemic. Never before, and certainly in my experience in this place, and I think for many generations, have we called upon our Australian public service to do more in the interest of Australians than we have in this past year, to, to work promptly, carefully, effectively, to advise, to assist, to support, to implement, to deliver, to be candid, and to ensure that, as a government, we could stand with Australians at their time of greatest need and as a parliament we could do the same. The Australian public service have had their finest hour in, in so many that we can remember and I'm deeply grateful to them and I don't want to single any of them out, Mr Speaker, because it is a shared commendation for them. They have all, from the quietest service to those that I would meet with on a regular basis uh, in my office or the many ministers here, all of you in the public service, whether serving here in Canberra or elsewhere around the country, thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of a very grateful nation. <laughs> Mr Speaker, here in the parliament in particular, can I thank all of those who have worked so hard in what has been an extra extraordinarily strange year for us to gather. For, to you and the President of the Senate, um, these are not things that I'm sure there was a guidebook for you to deal with as we sought to work through this year and keep our parliament functioning in the way it has. And I thank the opposition for their uh, support in ensuring that that was made possible. Particularly, I want to thank, uh, of course, the clerk of the house. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the deputy clerk, uh, the clerk's assistants, so to, to Clarissa and Catherine and Stuart Woodley, Jerome Brown and Peter Banson, thank you. Uh, for your tremendous work this year. To James Catchpole, uh, the Sergeant at Arms, thank you uh, for your tremendous work uh, that you have done uh, to ensure that we've been able um, to continue to function in a parliament over the course of this most difficult year in the way that we have, and to do it in as, in as normal as a way as we possibly could. Thank all of the attendants in particular, to Luch and the whole crew. Luch, we know well, but we know them all, and we thank them all for the great job they do looking after us in all sorts of ways this year, and they've gone above and beyond uh, the call of duty, I think, this year, and looked after us tremendous, tremendously well. Uh, the new innovations here, uh, the video link, which I even got to uh, appreciate looking over the chamber from, from back there and observing Question Time for the first time in a very long time. Mr Speaker, um, rather than being here in the chamber to participate. So thank you to all the technicians and all of those who made that possible this year, not just for how things worked in this chamber, so particularly for our members uh, and senators in, in Victoria especially, who are unable to be here in this parliament, uh, that they are able to participate with questions and um, through other contributions and also through the committee work uh, that is so important and to that committee work to continue uh, during the course of COVID. So thank you to all of those who are involved in that. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I thank uh, our own whips, uh, led, of course, uh, by uh, the, uh, the member for Ford. Um, Bert, you've, you've, uh, you've done a tremendous job. He's doing that job right now outside, uh, as he always is, uh, making sure uh, that uh, under what are quite extraordinary arrangements, and I'm sure the, the, the chief opposition whip, who sadly can't be with us, and we understand why, and we wish him again all the best, but uh, 
having to arrange the change seating arrangements yeah. and, and all of those issues, Mr. Speaker, added additional challenge and complexity. And I want to thank uh, uh, the members for Boofty, Gray, Nichols, and Flynn as well, also for your great teamwork. Um, our whips, our whips here is thanks, Chief Whip. Um, our whips, either on the government or the opposition, though, uh, just don't ensure that this parliament moves as smoothly as it possibly can, as I'm sure the leader of the opposition would agree. Our whips provide a great pastoral support to members in this place. Uh, the whips office is a safe space uh, where you can go and you can, you can speak to colleagues, uh, you can get the support you need, you can share things and stresses that may be pressing upon your service here in this place. And it is as true on the opposition side as it is on the government side. And we thank the whips and the staff in the whips offices as well, uh, providing that comfort and that support to all of us. Um, Mr Speaker, can I wish the Leader of the Opposition and his family all the very best for the Christmas period? Um, whether we, either of us get a break over the summer, well, we'll see. Uh, where we're needed to be, we'll be. Uh, but I do hope to you, Anthony, and your family that you'll be able to enjoy some good time together and, uh, and have a break, and we can all return for what will be another very, very busy and, and very full year uh, over the course of, of 2021. We're looking forward um, to a... a a very happy 2021. When we say Happy New Year to each other as we come to a close of this year, there's going to be a special meaning in it, I think, this year. We're, not just going to, we're going to really mean we're wishing for a very happy new year in 2021, something incredibly different um, from what we've experienced uh, during this year. I also need to acknowledge, Mr Speaker, uh, Stephen Boyd, uh, who was retiring from the Department of House of Representatives uh, early this year after 26 years of service. I remember sitting on the House uh, Economics Committee many, many years ago in opposition. He was the chair. He was the secretary to that committee at the time, and he served in in many in many many committees. Mr. Speaker, can I thank the manager uh, for opposition business and all opposition members and their staff? Um, can I thank Mr. Speaker, uh, my team, um, who I've had the opportunity this week to to, to thank and and to get around to, to say thank you to you. Uh, can I particularly thank? Uh, the, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, yeah. Liberal and Nationals have been together for a very long time. Yeah. Um, 75 years, Mr Speaker. Much longer to come. Um, and uh, we always serve together and we always bring our perspectives to the table together and we're always strongest when we're together and that has particularly been on display this year. And I, yeah. I want to thank all of my Liberal team and, and through the Deputy Prime Minister, all of the Nationals team mm -hmm. um, for the way we have come together for the nation over the course particularly of this past year. Can I, can I thank uh, the Deputy Leader of the Liberal Party and, and the Treasurer? It's pretty tough coming into a job uh, which your boss used to have. Uh, he's always got plenty of suggestions and always a, a very unique perspective on it. Um, but I really want to congratulate you, Treasurer, uh, not just on, the, on the, the extraordinary work you did on the economic recovery plan this year, but I particularly want to thank you because as so many other Victorian members of this place, uh, and I acknowledge the Minister for Health also in a similar way, that you had to be so often away from Amy and the kids and to be here well beyond parliamentary sittings, uh, but to be here constantly isolating on a couple of occasions, I think it ultimately was, and to be there in a way, I know how much that was uh, impacting on you, but you kept your focus, you kept your commitment, you kept your discipline and you stayed on the task. And uh, to, th to Amy and the kids, we thank you and we hope you'll enjoy some good weeks with them over the break. Uh, I particularly also want to acknowledge the Minister for Health. Uh, very similarly, these were, the, these were the portfolios that were really drawn upon this year um, and people had to stand up and and he, he's not that tall a fella, but he stood very tall this year. <laughs> he was a giant, almost, a as, almost as tall as the member for Groom, who we'd, <laughs> who we'd welcome to the House. Um, Mr Speaker, can I thank the, uh, former, the former leader of the government in the Senate, uh, Matthias Cormann, uh, for the great work he did this year. He's now engaged in, a, in another great enterprise. Heard it from him again this morning. But can I thank the, the new uh, leader of the government in the Senate, the Senator Birmingham. Can I thank also his new deputy leader, Senator Cash, uh, getting off to such a great start and after a particularly busy night last night and making sure that the chambers are working effectively and working together with their team. I want to thank again all the coalition members' staff 
I had the opportunity to do that this week uh, um, in, a, in a special phone look, look up, uh, a very large number. And uh, I'm so pleased we're able to do that. And I hope they will get some, some peace and some, some downtime over the course of the break as well. Um, can I um, also add my thanks to my own staff and led by, of course, by Dr Kunkel, by John Kunkel. Thank him for the tremendous work he does in driving our government, working, of course, with the Secretary of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Phil Gaitchens, and all the team there. It's been a, an interesting year in our office this year. There have been many prodigious contributions, but um, that has also included um, seven children born to my staff over the course of this year. Um, uh, we've got baby girls Evelyn, Evie, Vera and Matilda, and we've got boys Xavier, Anthony and Hugo. I think even Hugo might be in the chamber. He was a little bit earlier. Um, and two more arriving very, very soon. Here he goes. Here he goes up there with Sonia. Um, so that's absolutely tremendous. Um, to the leader of the, of the government in the House, uh, to the Attorney General and, and uh, Minister for Industrial Relations, uh, this is not a job I can assure you that he craves. It's, it's not one that he seeks, <laughs> but it is one uh, that is clearly done with a sense of duty and uh, responding to the call to service. And he does it in his, his absolutely impeccable way. And I want to thank you, Christian, for the tremendous job, which you continue to do even as we speak, and making sure that the parliament has, has worked so well this year. Um, so whether it's the federal police who look after me and my family, or uh, the, the Minister for Home Affairs and his family, or the Treasurer and his, or others who, who look after us from time to thing, thanks very much uh, for your efforts this year. To all the security in this building, to all the caterers, to the library, Hansard and support staff, um, even to the media in the building, which has been a very strange year for you too. And uh, we thank you for the jobs that we all do to make this place uh, what it is. To the cleaners around the building, um, and particularly those in my office, Anna and Maria, um, they, are, they, are, they are sisters, and uh, Lizia all have clocked up some 30 years in this building. They've been cleaning up a lot of mess for a long time, Mr Speaker, and I suspect they will continue to um, for some time still to come. And we thank them for their great smiles, which greet me every single day. Um, Mr Speaker, I, let me conclude by saying there are a couple of things we missed in this building this year. One of those was the school groups, I'm sure. It was great to wave to them yeah. across the glass here today, uh, but to see those schools coming back to our parliament, it's a bit like the birds that return after a storm, Mr Speaker. We're passing through that storm as a country. The signs, the signs are there. And I think as we go into this time of Christmas, Mr Speaker, it gives us the time to reflect on the renewal that will take place. And it will take place, Mr Speaker. It will give us encouragement as we go forward into the future. Australians, my prayers for you and your family this Christmas is that you will find that peace in a year where there has been little and that you will find the hope and you can cleave to that hope as you go into 2021. God bless you, Australia, and thank you very much, and Merry Christmas and a very happy 2021. The, just before I go to the Leader of the Opposition, the Leader of the House on a matter of procedure. Thank you. Yeah, just before the Leader of the Opposition's felicitations, I ask the Leader of the House to move a motion to suspend Standing Order 31, the automatic adjournment of the House, and Standing Order 33, the limit on business after normal time of adjournment for this sitting. Is leave granted? Leave is granted. The Leader of the House. The Speaker, I move that Standing Order 31, automatic adjournment of the House, and Standing Order 33, limit on business after normal time of adjournment, be suspended for this sitting. The question is the motion moved by the Leader of the House be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. And I'll now, on indulgence, call the Leader of the House. Thanks very much. So the Leader of the Opposition. Thanks very much. <laughs> I, I did hold that It's been, been, been a long year. So. At one stage, Mr <laughs> Speaker. Um, last year, uh, I started with the observation that it had been a very eventful year. And it was, but it had nothing on 2020, it's fair to say. Uh, the, the phrase year from hell comes to mind. Uh, drought leading to bushfires, leading into a pandemic, like just extraordinary, with some flood thrown in between. Uh, quite a tough year for so many Australians. Um, just as there's been, of course, many downsides though, there, there has been an upside. We have been reminded of things about the Australian spirit. 
Neighbours have looked after each other. Essential workers have continued to turn up to work, whether that be nurses, aged care workers, childcare workers, whether it be our cleaners, our truck drivers delivering food and essential services, whether it be our farmers continuing to produce product for us to get by. Uh, there's been a sense of uh, looking after each other in that great Australian spirit. Uh, my local neighbourhood has now got a, a, a little app that people connect onto so that the elderly who couldn't go out and do their own shopping because of the threat of the virus were looked after by others, yeah. just by strangers, people helping each other out. That app led people to go and fix the garden for people, put the garbage out, bring it in. That spirit, I think, has been quite tremendous uh, this year. Uh, it has reminded us that when the going does get tough, uh, Australians do look after each other. And of course, that followed the quite extraordinary bravery, including from the 33 lives lost during the bushfires. Uh, those scenes uh, from the beaches, uh, apocalyptic, uh, something out of a, a, a movie that just didn't look uh, real. Uh, people dealing with uh, trauma in the wake of that uh, has been a very tough year. Well, I think we end the year knowing that we can stand tall as a nation. We can look forward to 2021 with a sense of optimism. And I think that uh, we uh, will move forward, as the Prime Minister has said, looking forward to genuinely saying Happy New Year and hoping that indeed it is a happier and less difficult one than 2020. I do want to thank the Prime Minister for his words and I wish him and his family all the best for Christmas. Likewise to the Deputy Prime Minister and the Leader of the National Party uh, and to others on uh, the other side of this chamber, I wish you all and your families all the best. Uh, to my team, I thank uh, my Deputy uh, Richard Miles and uh, the leadership team. Uh, the Senate Leader, uh, Penny Wong, uh, Christina Keneally, uh, who's had a particularly tough year uh, losing her dad just a couple of weeks ago on the other side of the world, having to say goodbye uh, over a video link is just incredibly tough. And uh, Christina Keneally um, has uh, our thoughts. It will be a very difficult Christmas uh, for her. To uh, our manager as well of opposition business and the person who's chaired the Senate Select Committee in the, in the, uh, on COVID-19, uh, Katie Gallagher, and an amazing effort. Part of the economic team, along with uh, my shadow treasurer, uh, Jim Chalmers, who've done such a terrific job. Our manager of opposition business, uh, Tony Burke, who will make a great leader of the house. Uh, he is also the leader of Labor's musical division, <laughs> the Left Right Out Band. I say for those opposite who haven't had the opportunity to hear this band, <laughs> don't feel bad about that. <laughs> so if ever you're wondering what the noise is coming out of corridors on a Tuesday night, I recommend walking to the outer corridor <laughs> rather, than, rather than that. But Tony makes up for it with enthusiasm, with enthusiasm in the house. And he's outstanding deputy. Uh, Mark Butler. Um, I would like to make a special mention of our Chief Opposition Whip, Chris Hayes. Uh, last year, I actually said if he stayed off his motorbike, he should be all right. <laughs> well, that was optimistic. Um, he didn't stay off the motorbike, uh, but he also didn't stay out of hospital. And uh, he had uh, pretty significant surgery. Uh, but he has come through it uh, all the best. And for him and, and Bernadette, uh, we look forward uh, to uh, welcoming Chris back 
uh, in this place. He plays a very important role. Uh, to uh, all of my Labor colleagues and my Labor team, I, I thank each and every one of you and I look forward uh, to uh, working with you uh, over the coming year and perhaps year in a bit, whenever the election is, uh, any time uh, the Prime Minister chooses to, to have from uh, end of next year through to early 2022. Um, can I thank uh, all of your staff as well? Uh, they have had a particularly difficult year, as have staff of all members of parliament, uh, looking after issues that uh, are, are not the run-of-the-mill issues, people who've required support and, and I really thank uh, them. Um, I do want to say that uh, it, it is just an incredible honour that I cherish and am humbled by to lead the Australian Labor Party. When I joined this party, when I was still at school, uh, the idea that I could be Labor leader was certainly not something that uh, you won't find any uh, uh, school yearbooks from me saying I'm going to be uh, the leader of the Labor Party. Uh, I don't take it for granted. We are the oldest party in Australia and indeed one of the oldest political parties and movements in the world and we are the largest party in this parliament. Yeah, yeah. In this parliament. And I'm very proud that you've given me the honour of leading you. Uh, my own staff, I be led by Tim Gartrell, uh, an experienced person, the last bloke to be campaign director uh, when Labor went from opposition uh, to government, uh, a handy person to have as your chief of staff, and uh, working with Paul Erickson our National Secretary, who's uh, uh, aiming to, uh, of course, uh, duplicate uh, that feat by Tim Gartrell and his team at the ALP National Office. I, I thank them. I thank uh, the staff in my electorate office. As leader, you spend more time away than uh, the normal, uh, led by uh, Sue Heath, who is uh, an experienced electorate officer uh, across three states, and uh, she brings that that capacity uh, to, uh, to the office. Um, I do want to acknowledge the families of all the members as well. Uh, they give up a lot. Uh, I want to give a, a shout out, he'll be embarrassed by it, uh, to my son, Nathan, who was 20 on Tuesday. It's, uh, it's one of the things, it's uh, one of the, the uh, first times I haven't been able to spend his birthday uh, with him. And I say to the Leader of the House, you've done a better job with the sitting calendar because next year we get up a little bit early. It would be good to not sit in December and cram it in a bit earlier uh, so that uh, we can go to school functions, etc. cetera. But, but to Nathan, it really hit home to me on, on Tuesday, I've got to say. There are times in this job where you wake up in the morning and you, uh, you, 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 think, you, know, you think about your family and what you're, you're giving up. And that was one of those times. Uh, I am very proud of him. He's grown into a very fine young man. Uh, we had a, a lovely dinner with uh, him uh, and, his, and his girlfriend on, uh, on Saturday night. And uh, I look forward to, to seeing him tomorrow uh, when, uh, when I arrive home. Uh, to the parliamentary staff, I thank uh, the speaker uh, for the uh, extraordinary job that he's done. I think he is a very, very fine speaker indeed. Uh, I thank uh, the clerk, Clarissa, and Deputy Clerk Catherine, uh, to all of the attendants, including Luch, uh, the Hanside staff, who, for better or worse, immortalise every word in this place the moment it happens, uh, the keepers of knowledge and history in the Parliamentary Library, uh, the staff of the House and the Department of Parliamentary Services, uh, to Dom and his crew at Aussies, to everyone at the staff cafeteria. I've got to make this point. If you want to define the public sector versus the private sector, one area where the public sector has excelled is since it was brought back into public hands. The truth is that it's much better than it was and uh, they do a great job. They always have a smile. And uh, they've had to deal with, of course, the difficulties as well of COVID, 
and uh, keeping people safe has required extra work for all of the staff uh, in this building. Uh, to whoever made the decision to put a coffee cart near my office, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. That has been a particularly good uh, initiative. Uh, to the hardworking cleaners, one of the things about this year that I hope is never forgotten is the role that cleaners play in our society. And so to, to Joy and La, who take care of my office, uh, thank you. Uh, to the Comcar drivers and staff, particularly my Sydney drivers, Greg and Suzanne, uh, thank you. Everyone at FCM Travel, Parliament House Security and the AFP, uh, and indeed uh, all the staff at Parliament House. Uh, to the press gallery, um, I thank most of you. <laughs> I would like to make a special mention of everyone at AAP. Uh, even by the standards of 2020, it's been pretty tough for you, not knowing whether you would still have a job or continue to exist. Uh, I am confident as well that uh, I, I, I hope it will be a good day. I hope when we get back in 2021, we've got a, a public gallery uh, as well. Um, so I think that uh, all of those issues uh, ha that we've had to challenge in terms of uh, 2020. And I say as well to those workers, special workers, uh, aged care workers, nurses, teachers who had to reinvent education this year, uh, thank you for what you've done. A shout out to year 12 students who had it particularly uh, difficult. Uh, Victorians, of course, had, had a really tough year. All those who had to uh, isolate uh, was very difficult uh, for them. Can I acknowledge everyone who's lost a loved one in this pandemic? Everyone who's lost their job and is facing a lean Christmas. Everyone who's still living in a caravan after losing their home in the bushfires. Um, I do want to say that uh, for a community of a very different, set, of a very different sort, um, a highlight of my year in 2020 uh, was watching us put 60 points on the roosters uh, in the last round for South Sydney. I, I look forward to a more successful 2021 there. It might have been different had Adam Reynolds not worn yellow shoes uh, and, uh, and step on a line. Um, lastly, can I thank the people of the electorate of Grainler in the inner west of Sydney. Unless we are lo good local members, then nothing comes beyond that. And uh, all politics is local. Uh, I have a vibrant, fantastic community that I'm very proud to represent. It's diverse. Uh, it has a lot of professionals. It also has more boarding houses than any electorate in the country. A lot of poverty. It has multicultural. It is a multicultural nation, uh, nation but that electorate as well has more than 40% speak a, a language other than English at home. And lastly, can I say to the Prime Minister that we will have a plan for the election, but I say to the Liberal Party that we have a plan for 18 years' time as well, because uh, in, uh, when Parliament resumes, there will be no less than six newborns in, on our side uh, to five parents, because Annika Wells did the member for Lilly, went beyond uh, what is uh, Queensland reasonable. Efficiency. Queensland efficiency, two at once. Uh, I, I, got, I got to, uh, to uh, hold uh, the, the twins uh, last Saturday in Brisbane. But it's quite remarkable, it's a good thing for the parliament that we have had uh, literally six newborns in the last month on, on our side of the parliament uh, with Annika Wells, uh, times two, Alicia Payne, Marielle Smith, but also the partners, Jess, uh, Pat Morgan's, Gorman's partner, and Matt Keogh's partner just uh, yesterday, I think Annabelle, uh, giving, giving birth as well. So uh, it, is, uh, it is a good thing and it says something about how this parliament is, is getting uh, more representative of the people who vote for us. I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a great New Year. Yeah. Okay, well, I think before we call on the um, matter of public importance, um, 
I just, for the information of honourable members, I present determination uh, number one of 2020, a reappointment of the position of Secretary, Department of Parliamentary Services.